As somebody who is a current KTM owner and has owned other KTM bikes in the past, whilst I've always enjoyed riding them, I've not necessarily enjoyed looking at them. This 890 Duke is a little bit different though, and I think that's largely down to its all black design, which I really like. When I picked it up, I said to the guys, this is a really nice looking bike, but there's a few changes that I would like to make if I owned one. So they said to me, well, head onto the configurator, build your perfect 890 Duke, and show us what it looks like. So that's exactly what I did. So I headed over to the configurator page for the 890 and clicked on the power parts button. First thing I thought, well, let's have a look at the exhausts and I'll go for the Akrapovich slip-on. Next was to add some unnecessary, but actually quite funky little LED indicators. Then it was time for a little bit more comfort with the addition of an ergo rider seat. That big cumbersome rear number plate hanger and tail light also had to go, so time to pop the option for the tail tidy. And whilst we're neatening things up, let's lose the pillion foot peg hangers as well. Okay, that's enough now, so let's click on the summary and see what the damage is. Not too bad, that exhaust makes the biggest difference to the cost, so time to send that request off to the boys at KTM. Okay, so the bike is back, and obviously there's been a big change to the way it looks. First thing you'll notice probably is the exhaust. The Akrapovich exhaust is a really nice looking piece of kit. It's actually longer and slightly bigger, although lighter than the stock one. Another big change is the tail tidy. Gone is that great big plastic bit out of the back. This is a much neater setup. And you've got these fantastic little LED indicators, really tiny, but incredibly bright. You've got an ergo seat, and that is much more comfortable. If you own an 890 Duke and you haven't tried one of these, then I definitely recommend going down this route. If you're using the bike for long trips, really does make a difference. The other change obviously is by fitting this bracket here we can lose the rear passenger footrest hangers just losing those visually makes the bike look better but you also save quite a bit of weight when those two bits of metal have disappeared off of the side i've also taken the rear grab rail off just to neaten this up at the back so for me these small changes i think make a real visual impact to the bike and i really like the way this bike looks but what's it like out on the road Okay, so a little disclaimer first. If you've come to this video looking for wheelies and backing into corners, then I'm afraid you're gonna be a little bit disappointed. That's just not the way I do things. If you do wanna see that and you haven't done already, I would suggest heading over to the Bike World channel and checking out Chris Northover's review. Chris is an incredible rider and he really pushes the Duke to its limit. What I actually wanted to find out is what this is like as potentially an everyday bike. Obviously KTM trade a lot on their race heritage and when you start the clock up you get that ready to race. So they've got that kind of aggressive race hooligan kind of appeal to their marketing. Uh, but this is a reasonably priced lightweight naked bike and I think it might just be an ideal perfect bike for commuters, for people who want to travel longer distances and it's still gonna work for those people who I want to be a hooligan at the weekends. So I guess the ideal place to start as usual is with the engine and this 889cc LC8 little c engine. I ride a KTM 790 Venture as my normal bike and I actually do prefer this 890 motor, that heavier weight crank that they put into it means that it's much more flexible. So that corner I just took back there at 30 miles an hour in fourth gear, my 790 would complain and I'd need to be kicking it down the box. And I find with this engine, I'm up and down the box much less. Still revs up quickly, maybe not quite as quickly as the 790. That's the feedback I get from some owners that have tried both. But it still spins up very quickly. 
I just find this 890 motor to be a, a better all-round engine the motor itself in this tune on the standard 890 Duke puts out 115 brake horsepower and 92 Newton meters of torque the bike itself weighs 168 kilos dry so when the 14 litre tank is full up you're looking at around about 177 179 kilos all in which uh, for me I think that's a really good power to weight ratio but we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the handling but it's the engine that I wanted to start with and it's a right little cracker it's a small compact little parallel twin but it's got plenty of power nice and flexible <laughs> Over there. there you go the hazards of driving in the country got a bit of pheasant on my knee but there you go um, what was I saying yeah the engine incredibly flexible pulls really strongly and uh, I'm personally a fan of uh, more talky twins than a, than a triple or a inline four or a V4 that's just personal preference so for me this is a, a perfect little engine it's got that extra pull down below without having to really scream the motor this bike is fitted with the optional quick shifter plus which is excellent both up and down if you buy one of these bikes it's a definite uh, upgrade that I would pay the extra for so we can see 37 miles an hour third gear can't really see what's going on yeah I've got a free run here so and you can see how quickly that picked up it's a real peachy little engine let's have a look at suspension now because that's where things uh, on this compared to the R model are a little bit more basic we've got a WP 43 millimeter forks up front and these are separate function forks so you've got the spring in one and the damping in the other uh, no adjustments on the top there you can't change any preload you can't do anything with it it is as it is but I have to say for a suspension setup straight out of the bag I find this works really well and that's probably the reason why if I went for a Duke I would go for this version over the R I know there's a lot of dick swinging when they talk about the R and everything else that uh, it has a little bit more power and it's more aggressive and it's more focused and it is indeed and if you're going to be doing track days if you want a bike that you can buzz around on and do the few track days then the R definitely makes sense but for everyday road riding I think uh, the standard Duke is uh, is great spot on I think the suspension is good does exactly what it's supposed to do gives you really good feedback you can push the bike hard on this suspension and uh, it's quite rewarding in that respect the brakes are really good as well uh, they're KTM own branded brakes I don't know who makes them I suspect it's not KTM but uh, readily mounted four piston calipers on the front and a floating on the back and uh, they're bloody good they work but you've got a really nice feel with those as well what I really wanted to do in this review was talk about more how the bike makes you feel than, than just chew through the numbers I've ever said this before and I've had discussions with people online about this that what a bike says on the spec sheet doesn't necessarily feed into what it's like on the road and you may look at all the numbers in the world but it can't give you a feeling for how that bike rides and now KTM call this the scalpel I guess that's because it carves and cuts corners with precision but they're right it is such a maneuverable bike you're in a nice comfortable riding position you've got 820 millimeter seat height this bike's got the ergo seat on of course don't think that adds any height to it but it certainly adds a lot of comfort i guess when people do a lot of comparisons they put this up against the street triple both fantastic bikes 
and again the difference between the two of those is going to come down to personal taste uh, I like the Street Triple a lot but I prefer the KTM I think it's got a more comfortable riding position my legs are not as bent as they are on the Street Triple and I'm not canted as much forward and as I said before I prefer the lower down grunt from this parallel twin than a higher revving triple but what I love about this bike is just how manoeuvrable it is having a light bike makes a big difference but having a light bike that handles and corners like this is uh, something else I do have to be a little bit careful today because these uh, lanes are still a bit greasy quite a bit of leaf matter stuck to the road so I'm not going to go slinging it too fast into some of the corners if I can't see what's going on but trust me this is fantastic and I will put my hand on my heart and say this is probably the best handling naked bike that I've ridden I try not to to gush too much about bikes when I do reviews I try to keep everything balanced which I'm still doing with this but it is very hard when I ride this bike not to get very excited about how much fun it is to ride it is an absolute blast and I say that can be whether you're scratching round lanes like this with the ergo seat on it I've done a few hundred miles in a day on this bike and done it in complete comfort I've also had to filter it through traffic and nose to tail it through towns and it's equally happy doing that and that takes me back to what I was talking about at the beginning review so although KTM are all very much ready to race it's all very aggressive and all the videos of people backing it into corners I think sometimes that might potentially put people off because they think this is a real aggressive motorcycle uh, and it's not at all it can be if you really want to manhandle it about then it will do whatever it is you want it to do but I think it's also a really nice easy riding naked bike and I have to admit if I was looking for a partner to go with an adventure bike in my garage something that I can drag out and have a bit of fun on I think this is what it would be it's just pure riding pleasure you've got plenty of power wherever you need it And you even get a nice pop and crackle out of the exhaust on the overrun the accessories that we put on in the configurator are largely cosmetic uh, the tail tidy I think is much neater these little LED indicators are fantastic they're so small but unbelievably bright again probably didn't need to put those on there but I like those and I might look at a set of those for my 790 the ergo seat is really comfortable I've already talked about that so the other part that we put on that uh, is going to make a difference is the Acura exhaust and I thought well whilst I'm on that configurator I might as well put that on and see what KTM did and to be fair they put one on um, I didn't go for the full system just the end can and uh, it is a little bit lighter than the stock one it's not really any noisier it's just got a slightly deeper tone to the exhaust which I like but I actually think the stock exhaust is pretty good it's a bit like the one on my 790 Adventure it's not particularly heavy and actually when you put an aftermarket one on it's hard to, to actually make any kind of real considerable weight savings I think you'll make more weight savings on this bike just by taking the rear foot peg hangers off because that's quite a chunky bit of steel but if you've got any money to throw it of course then the Acura is a very good alternative well there's got to be some negatives right well you know the looks are not for everybody 
it's minor things. The wing mirrors just don't stick out far enough. But they're okay, it's not a major problem. But this bike has got a lot of optional extras on it. They tend to switch a lot of these things on on the press bikes. So I've already talked about the quick shifter. They've also switched all the electronics on as well. So as well as the standard rain mode, road mode and street mode, you've got the track mode switched on and track mode will allow you to dial in your throttle response and the amount of traction control so you can fine tune just how much the traction control kicks in um, you can also turn off the anti wheelie and the bike has a launch control as well as well as that we've got supermoto mode and that allows you to uh, switch the ABS off at the rear so if you want to start backing it into corners supermoto style you can do that uh, but the electronics all seem to work really well I don't really find them to be particularly intrusive uh, they're just there in the background doing what they need to do and the TFT screen I really like as well it's quite small by some standards but it's unfussy like most of the KTM stuff purely functional and that's what a lot of KTM's are there's nothing on this bike that doesn't need to be on there. So the rear subframe is just a single piece of aluminium, which obviously helps to keep it light, but it also keeps it stiff and strong. You can just feel it in the bike. Everything's really taut, but not to the extent that it becomes uncomfortable and hard and unwieldy. I love it. I absolutely love this bike. As a, as a, a naked bike to go out and ride and just have fun on, it is absolutely outstanding. There's probably not that much more I can add to the review, to be honest. The engine's really good, the brakes are really good, the suspension is pretty good. For me, I don't think that uh, moving up to the R is really necessary for the road. Uh, I think it's just a bit too focused. Um, obviously, if you're going to do track days, then, then that makes sense, or if you're a really aggressive road rider, then uh, you might get the benefit out of it for, for most of us mere mortals this bike is plenty so for me to sum up really uh, and the question I put in the original is this a good all round bike and I would say absolutely yes I've ridden this in all sorts of weathers in all sorts of roads with all sorts of other people on other bikes and it has been absolutely fantastic I, I am actually quite smitten with this if I had the money I would certainly be looking for one of these to sit alongside an adventure bike in my garage and that would be the perfect duo for me. I haven't actually talked about the price either, I just remembered. So 9649 on the road for this as a basic bike. Obviously you saw from the configurator how much it is with all the other bits and pieces added. The Acura exhaust obviously makes the biggest difference there. For me, as an owner, I probably wouldn't bother with the supermoto mode. I probably wouldn't bother with switching on the track mode but I think this bike in its basic form with a few little tweaks and the quick shifter is an absolutely perfect little road bike and as I say I'd be very happy to have one in my garage. So I hope you found the video interesting, I hope you found it useful, maybe a little bit different to some of the other 890 Duke videos that are all about wheelies and skids and all that sort of stuff. Nothing against those videos of course. I enjoy watching them and, and Chris's review on Bike World are absolutely fantastic but I don't ride like that day to day actually I can't ride like that I don't have that skill set so I just wanted to find out actually if you ignore the ready to race stuff does this bike make for a great all-round naked bike and the answer is uncategorically yes all that leaves me to say is until next time thanks for watching take care ride safe and I'll see you soon. Bye.